Hi everybody, I'm Melinda Gallant and I want to welcome you to another Cape Conversations. We've got a good one today. It's all about theater, one of my favorite subjects for sure. And it's about theater in the mid to lower Cape. What do you think about that? You can actually get in your car and travel to another theater right here on Cape Cod and see fabulous works. So come along, let's have another Cape Conversation. Hi everybody, I am sitting here today with probably two of my favorite people in the whole wide world. And that's because they're letting me direct in their theater. What do you think about that? What's wrong with those people? Anyway, I am here with the wonderful Chris. Chris Edwards. I know it's Chris Edwards. Sure, thank you. I, I call people by their first <laughs> name. Sure, thank it's you. It's Chris Edwards. Oh, excuse me. And Sonia Shoning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Both? I'm good. So we're here today to talk about a fabulous theater company called Eventide Theater Company. Mm -hmm. How long has it been around? Eventide's been around just over 25 years yeah, at this point. Yeah. 25, 25 years. 25 years. I would never think you were 100. <laughs> no, you're not angry. So how long have you been with Eventide? I've been with them for about six months now. Oh, is that right? And yeah, maybe a little bit less. I just took over as the managing director wow. uh, back at the beginning of the summertime. Wow. Uh, and, and what about you, son? Uh, we came on at the same time, and I came on as the artistic director. So we are kind of partners in crime. <laughs> oh, excellent. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, so what's your job? What do you do? Well, um, our job is basically to try and guide the theater, <clears throat> moving it forward uh, while respecting its past. Uh, as the managing director, I handle a lot of the nuts and bolts pieces, you mm -hmm. know, making sure that the lights are on and making sure that the hall has been reserved for rehearsals and for performances. Uh, Sonia heads the artistic uh, uh, committee, which is mm -hmm. responsible for looking forward and choosing our shows and kind of mm -hmm. choosing the direction and spirit that the theater is going to mm -hmm. take on. Mm -hmm. And, and so you're new to that as well, right? Yes, I am. But you don't come from this. You, you did other things, or you're doing other. You have your own consulting firm, correct? I'm a, my own consulting in early childhood. But I've been doing community theater for years and have a background in singing as well. Oh, that, that's yeah. very, that's great. And Chris, what about you? What, what's your background? What, did you do something else, or is this your full-time gig? Well, I, it would be nice if this were my full-time <laughs> gig. <clears throat> that's what I say. Sometimes it seems like it's my full-time yes, gig. Right. Uh, my background is... Uh, Pretty varied. I was a professional performer for a number of years and oh. I've gotten into uh, operations management, used to run hotels and properties. Yeah. So kind of being able to marry those two experiences together, both my being able to work with artists and performers mm -hmm. and understanding it from that perspective, but at the same time being able to handle logistics and being able to manage a staff, both of those seem to dovetail in very nicely with this position. That's excellent. Well, so where, where do you come from originally? Uh, well, I was born in Rhode Island. I yeah. spent most of my adult years here in Massachusetts. Oh, really? I did. And then I uh, spent uh, eight years down in Florida working down there and uh -huh. running uh, an entertainment company there. Oh, neat. Um, and just recently moved back up here uh, to get back into the hotel business and uh, running a business now in Hyannis. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And you've been on the Cape for a while, right? I've been on the Cape for about 10 years. Oh, uh, we're originally from Worcester. Oh, yeah. And uh, when we moved uh, down here, my husband still kind of works in Worcester. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we love being here. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And I actually worked in Florida as well. And we moved here from Florida. So we're from Worcester, but moved here from Florida as well. So oh, my from Florida. gosh. Central Florida, Windermere, oh, near Orlando. Okay. See, you so. never know what people find you out about know. themselves no. here on this show. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So where is the season this year? Uh, what do you mean by where is the season? Well, are we at the end of the season, the beginning of the season? How does it work? Well, it's mm -hmm. funny you should bring that up yes. because we're actually in a period of expansion and growth as far as the theater is concerned. And that's oh, part of great. what Sonia and myself are involved in. Oh, um, we have shifted our season from a... Um, from a split year where it's in the fall all the way to the spring and we're actually going to be doing a calendar year season. So wow, technically, uh, Over the River and Through the Woods, which is the show that you are directing. I am directing the show. Um, <laughs> that is going to be um, uh, the final show of our 2018 season and then we're launching into a 2019 season. Um, and with this change comes a lot of different things that we are looking to do as an organization. Mm -hmm. um, 
One of the quotes that I would like to latch on to, uh, Kathy Scrizzy Driscoll over at the Cape Cod Times had said that Eventide is a theater ready to evolve. Oh, that's, that's yeah. great. And I think that's very much, that's very descriptive of where we were approaching things from as an organization, mm -hmm. trying new things, looking at some new things, reaching out and uh, um, trying to experiment with some new ideas and some new activities and bringing some new folks into the theater to help expand the vision of the community. Um, we have been very much, as I mentioned earlier on, for 25 years, we've been uh, a small community theater located in the heart of Dennis Village. Um, but we're reaching out. We're trying some new things. We're, we're launching a, a, a sing-out of HMS Pinafore um, the weekend after Columbus Day. Um, we're looking at doing new and exciting things uh, in regards to our songwriting and our playwriting competitions. Wonderful. Um, and summer programming as well. Summer programming is something that has definitely been something that we are looking to branch into. Um, we haven't had the opportunity to do so, right. um, and we're excited because we're exploring many, many options right now, and all of them seem to be pointing us towards some sort of inventive and creative summer programming. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, the one thing that is kind of fun about um, Eventide, and again, I've been to plays there, and um, but I had never directed there and had never, I mean, it was called the Gertrude Lawrence stage. Mm -hmm. right. But every night when we turn off the lights after rehearsal, there she is <laughs> beaming down. <laughs> Um, I don't know whether the, the theater is haunted or not, but uh, <laughs> she's definitely beaming down with that kind of coy look and smile on her Maybe face. Maybe a guardian so. angel over the show. So. Let's hope so. <laughs> so. Let's hope so. I don't know what I'm hoping for anyway. So, um, which is really, I mean, you talk about heritage and you talk about, I mean, that theater was built because her friends wanted to have a theater built in her name. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine? And her husband, yeah. It was a, was it I her believe it was a husband as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, from what I understand, she used to attend the church that it, the uh, mm -hmm. hall is affiliated with. Right. Because she would stay there while, or she would attend church there That's while right. she was performing over at the Cape mm -hmm. uh, right. Playhouse when right. the Cape Playhouse was in its heyday. Right. Um, and because of that, she became very invested in the community and in the church itself. So that's where the the uh, theater comes from. And it is kind of nice to have that that connection to Broadway royalty. That well, and it, and it is. I mean, it certainly is. And and it's. I mean, people should just come down to see it because it's hard to believe that it's there is the church. Although I probably will get in trouble because I did swear last night, but the other <laughs> night. Um, but it was in the hall, so I figure it wasn't quite the church. We won't tell. Um, but you know, to have that built for her again and be able to perform on a stage that has her name on it should make any actor or director just beam because it's it's a wonderful tradition. Well, and I think we're blessed in the sense that it also has the ability to draw an immense pool of talent that we are very, very fortunate. Um, at Eventide Theatre Company, we have had the opportunity to work with some of the best actors in the region. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's because we're known for the quality of the performances, the quality of the productions, and also the intimacy of the productions. Mm -hmm. The ability that we have to use what is essentially a, a small theater. It's not an enormous theater. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> it's like stages small. Yeah. 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 But to be able to accommodate a small theater and to be able to offer main stage, big, elegant productions on such a small, intimate scale it's really is one, one of the best qualities that we can offer. Um, and because of that, we allow a lot of actors to come in and work with pieces that they might not have the opportunity to work right. with elsewhere. Um, and for an actor, having been an actor and as a performer, mm -hmm. you know, being able to dive into some, some deep material like that is really very enriching. So sure. being able sure. to offer it that is. to other actors to experience is really quite, it puts us in a very fortunate position. Well, it's as a director um, of this particular show, which I didn't know about. I knew about Memphis mm -hmm. that Joe DiPietro had written. Right. I directed I Love You, You, Perfect Now Change, uh, which he had written as well, or he wrote as well. And um, it was, uh, I mean, this is just, this is going to make you laugh, and it's going to bring a tear to your eye. And I have six. One is a young woman from uh, Louisiana who's the um, librarian in Marston's Mills, assistant librarian in Marston's Mills, a young woman. And all the rest of them, uh, seasoned actors, uh, they are phenomenal. And as I, 
as I watched the rehearsal, it was actually two nights ago, I, I did cry. I mean, I didn't, you know, I, I got a tear in my eye. And I'm sitting there, my God, I've heard this stuff how many times? Uh, I think I could say it. I could do those lines. But they all bring something so special. And it's such a special piece about, a fam about family. And family, right now, Man, it's really important. It's important to all of us. It really, really is. And I think everyone's going to be able to relate. When you talk about family, I had the opportunity to come in and see the rehearsal. It's the first time I actually saw them on stage, right. off book. And the chemistry between them all oh, is wonderful. just so wonderful. And you're right, I had a tear in my eye and, and chuckling you know, within a minute right. of each other. But right. it's a wonderful performance. Yeah. Well, um, it, it, is, it is amazing. You know, we all go, we've all been to a Thanksgiving dinner, right? <laughs> well, this isn't really Thanksgiving. It takes place in the summer. But um, a Thanksgiving dinner where the family is all there. And it's always a treat to hear what they have to say. <laughs> and, and so this poor young man, uh, he gets it from both sides, both sets of grandparents, and uh, even from the woman he's introduced to. So it is a, it is a del it's delightful, and I want to thank you both in public for uh, allowing me to be a part of it, because it is, it is quite amazing. Well, we thank you very much. It was a short list. And <laughs> well, I was glad to get it. But I want to know uh, what's coming up. What's coming up? All right. So do you want to talk about the uh, Gilbert and Sullivan a little bit? I know sure. I'll mention that bit. briefly. That's actually yeah. happening before Over the River. And as I, uh, I mentioned earlier on, it's something that's called a sing-out. And we're doing it in partnership with the, uh, the Inn at Yarmouth Port. Um, <clears throat> and I totally came across this by accident. I was very fortunate to find this woman who had been a professional opera singer um, she's done a lot of work regionally, mm -hmm. and she moved in locally, and she opened up this inn, and she was lamenting that there wasn't a lot of Gilbert and Sullivan, and she missed it. And I said, well, we're looking for more and interesting programming. Sure. Um, so she introduced me to Elaine Crane, who is the head mm -hmm. of the New England Gilbert and Sullivan Society. Oh, my gosh. And uh, Elaine said, yeah, we want to come down and do a concert. We'd like to make this a regular thing. Um, so we kind of hustled and bustled, and it is under a fairly short notice, but we decided, well, the weekend after Columbus Day, sort of an opportunity to expand the season for some of the inns and the hotels down here, we're going to offer the special show. We're going to bring down some soloists from Boston. Well, where, where are you holding it? We're going to be holding it at the Dennis Union Church. Oh, you are? But yeah. in the church or in the... In the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be... I was uh, going to say you'd have my set there. I know. <laughs> It's a great looking Italian Hoboken <laughs> set, though. Didn't you tell her? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to be doing it in the sanctuary, and we're encouraging people who are coming to bring their scores because Gilbert and Sullivan fans are fanatics in the truest sense. Yes, they sense. are. I have a, we have friends that they it was sung at their wedding. Oh, then, mm -hmm. then many years you know. ago, it's it's yes. people take it very seriously yes, and very personally, and we're yeah. and a lot of people who are even casual fans have copies of the scores. So we're inviting people, bring your score, sing along with the chorus, join our soloists. We've got Boston soloists, local soloists, um, uh, local business owners, Kathleen being one of them, who are going to be singing uh, a local baker in Yarmouth as well, another one. We've got some really wonderful featured voices that are local. Right. Plus, we've got this wonderful talent coming in from the Boston area who do this professionally, and this is their hobby. And all these voices are going to be filling the sanctuary, and then everything's augmented by folks who are just fans and bring right. along their scripts. So, for, so the uh, chorus, shall we say, can be the people in the audience. Absolutely. Right. Oh, how fun. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm going to have to let my friends know who live in Pine Hills. It's going to be sure. a lot of fun. And if, it, if it's a success, my hope is that we get to do this every year, at the same time with a different show, and maybe turn it into a mounted production down the road as well. I think it has a lot of opportunity. Again, with Eventide being poised to evolve, sure. it gives us the opportunity to partner with a, a, a nationally recognized organization, oh, internationally actually. The New England Association right. is partnered with mm -hmm. the English Association. Well, I, now, I know that um, the theater um, has a group, members, and um, who's the president? Uh, David Kaplan. David Kaplan, yes. I actually worked with David for a short period of time, so he's a great oh, guy. He is great. Yeah, and he yeah. knows. He's the one that does the Kaplan Prize, correct? He's part of that. The he's song? involved. He's in involved. That. Yeah, he's in involved in it. it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was. Uh, he's been on the board for a while, but he recently became. Oh, chair okay. Of the board great. Chair. Yeah. That's Strong wonderful. Williams, right? Good. So you want to hear about our yeah, season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I can see on the little list you have. Because I don't want to mess up the dates. I know. <laughs> but my first people. Yes. I have wanted to do. I'm. I'm really sad that somebody else is directing it, but I have wanted to do that forever. It is a delightful show and funny. 
Oh, oh my gosh. We can't fun wait. And, and, fun. and she has some surprises planned, so I don't want to go into it. Who's directing this? Uh, Kate Ford. Oh, wonderful. So Kate's directing Pfeiffer's People, yeah. and it's going to be a little bit kind of like an immersive theater experience. Oh, a little wonderful. Bit too, and I'll just leave it at that. Okay. So. Um, but also, what we're talking about, you can also find it at eventidearts.org. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be involved in the Dennis Holiday Stroll on December oh, 9th. Fun. We are thinking of doing uh, some short Christmas plays. Oh. Christmas readings, so we'll be yeah. doing that, a little right. series of that. And then Pfeiffer's People, well, let's talk about Over the River opens October 18th. Yes, we, we don't, don't want to forget that. that. We don't, we've talked get about your it, tickets but we didn't now. get the dates. We're going to sell out. Tickets There's are available, no they're on site, <laughs> October 18th through November 4th. Yes. So please yes. do yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so Pfeiffer's People will be February 14th, so Valentine's Day, if you're looking for something fun to do, that's fun. when we open, and it goes through March 3rd. Then we have the Kaplan Playwriting Competition, right. March 23rd and 24th. We've been doing this for several years now. It really nurtures local talent. Mm -hmm. And then a songwriting competition on April 6th. Again, Wonderful. that's uh, something annual that we do. Uh, she Loves Me musical. Oh, another so great one. It's a wonderful thing. So if you're familiar with uh, the shop around the corner or you've got mail, right. you know the show. Yeah. And it's uh, May 9th through the 26th. Oh, so wonderful. that's coming up. And then further down the road, we have uh, Ripcord a play about two women in a nursing home. Oh, excellent. Yes, and the kind of hilarity and, and still poignancy that ensues there as well. Oh, excellent. Good. Right. And good, we're looking, good, good. and again, we're looking forward to some summer programming, which uh, we'll share. Now, hopefully. like Pfeiffer's People, mm -hmm. uh, She Loves Me, that'll be open auditions, or if those, if those they'll will be open auditions. Cast. Open okay, auditions. Open mm -hmm. And I always think that's a good thing, you know, when they, they let you know, because down here, because we're we're all in that theater crowd, we kind of go from, travel from theater to theater, and you see the same we people. But isn't it fun when you find somebody who isn't <laughs> that you haven't seen before? That's true. Like I have this young woman, who um, Rebecca, who mm -hmm. is sensational, and she came out. She just came out because she hadn't. She graduated with a theater degree. You're right, and she was wonderful at auditions. I, yeah. I remember being there, yeah. and it's nice to see the familiar faces that you have, but it is nice to see the mixture as well. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's lots of. Fun. We have a small community um, theater family that we call them, right? <laughs> yeah, Although yeah, we are rich right. with uh, the that's number right. of theaters we have. That's great, mm -hmm. wonderful. So, where do you see it going? I mean, you know, you're saying it's going to evolve. Mm -hmm. um, have you gotten as far as making those plans, those strategic plans, or is that something that's on the list? You got to do it. It's on the list. <laughs> it's definitely something that is uh, present in all of our minds. Whereas in a lot of organizations, perhaps, and I don't want to speak of every organization, but a lot of organizations, strategic planning is often in the back seat because they've already got a pretty clear blueprint right. of what they sure. want to do. Um, for us, it's definitely at the front of our minds what we want to do, where we want to be. Um, we're fortunate in the fact that Eventide Theatre Company is nimble. Um, <clears throat> because we are small and because we are willing to try new things, mm -hmm. um, we are very, very nimble and we can try new spaces. Like this summer we did the Jacob Sears Library. Mm -hmm. and we talked about doing things maybe over the Cape Cod Media Center um, or different locations that might fit uh, that would be tailored to fit our um, type of performances. Well, I have a question. So we have a sandwich town hall. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a sandwich arts alliance that does a little bit of theater, mm -hmm. but not a lot. Um, would you ever consider bringing something that wasn't too too hard to move, shall I say, to to someplace else to do it? I mean, we, the nice thing is yeah. because we are nimble, we can consider anything. Right. Um, well, I know, but that, you know, that's part of the half the battle is considering because yeah, a lot of times you get no. Right. I would say I think it's it's balancing understanding that we are in the heart of Dennis Village and, mm -hmm. and that's where our footprint is. Right. But expanding uh, that to other audiences, we certainly are open to. Well, I would, you know, the outreach is is always good yeah. for sure. And collaboration as well. Collaboration is much more the direction we want to head, and we want to make sure mm -hmm. that we keep our roots again in that little theater with the grand dame of Broadway <laughs> theater looking down there on us. There she is. There um, she is. She's just like this. You have you nailed the pose. <laughs> I look at it every night as I go out going, please, just give me a break. But, but at the same time, there are a lot of other theaters in the area, or even not even just theaters, a lot of other mm -hmm. arts councils and arts organizations that are looking for interesting programming. Sure. And if we can find a way to partner with them to offer something mm -hmm. either um, specifically tailored to that venue or something that might travel around, these are all things that are on the boards. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan, you know, I, it was mentioned that Pfeiffer's People is going to be an immersive theater experience. Mm -hmm. I love experiential and experimental mm -hmm. and environmental theater. Um, I think it's, especially with a modern audience that is used to having all of their senses engaged, and that's one of the best ways to really engage an audience, is to really sure. bring them into the space. Um, <clears throat> and we're looking at different 
options, different venues, mm -hmm. different places that we can do that. As far as where we're going to be in the next 10 or 15 years, um, we are definitely a small local theater in the heart of Dennis Village. Part of what I'm here for, part of what uh, uh, we're looking to do is to grow and expand that name. And, mm -hmm. and I know Sonia feels mm -hmm. the same way. We want Absolutely. to let other people know so that way when they see our name it is synonymous with quality theater, creative theater, sure. something mm -hmm. that they can look forward to. Sure, um, sure. Yeah, and we're also very, very fortunate, I have to say. Our organization has got an incredible, incredible support infrastructure. You mentioned the, the stage crew. Oh my God, I can't believe um, the set. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they, and they're so dedicated. Some of them have been there for years. Right. Yeah. They just, I met yeah. Howard. You met Howard. You finally met Howard. Stay, right. I mean, Howard <coughs> should get a plaque. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a very engaged board, too. <laughs> yes, and, yeah. It's yeah. just as well as members. Quite, yeah. qu quite amazing. But mm -hmm. uh, I was, I was uh, and obviously the set designer is Phil Collins. Mm -hmm. um, who's a great man, um, but I went in last night and, and there is the famous Greg Ham of, of, he used to tell me he was the lighting person for dead rock stars because he would do all the, you know, tribute shows, okay. oh. you know, everywhere. <laughs> right. He did tell me that about five years ago. Yeah. Uh, and I actually remembered it because it's what I think of him, I always think of dead <laughs> rock stars. But he was there, there they are, and they're just busy as little bees, and they and it's done. I mean, it's basically done, and the lights are set, and mm -hmm. when my actors come in on Sunday afternoon, they're gonna be wowed, because what was kind of like, really? Is going to be wow. <laughs> and they're quality sets, too. Yes, and they we've are. Got, yeah. We've got fortunate yeah. that we have this resource of people to draw on, we have this engaged mm -hmm. membership, we have people who, when we put the call out, they're willing to step up. But they also bring to the table with them a level of craftsmanship and a level of expectation mm -hmm. that, again, we are very fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, and some of these people are professionals and stand that's in their field. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Nick Dorr, who's on. Oh, uh, sure. Sure. Who's on our board, professional yeah. set designer. Yeah. Right, right. Well, I didn't have the, um, I did, unfortunately, did not have him design the set, but it turned out right. okay. <laughs> so I'm very pleased with it, right. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's just, it's a wonderful, it, the whole the whole building, how everybody treats each, each other inside the building is um, very uplifting. And I'm gonna go back to, here we are today, and there's all this stuff in the news, this craziness, and you're doing a show about a loving, warm Italian family and how terrific that is. And then you're, you're gonna do a holiday stroll, then you're gonna go into craziness um, with Pfeiffer's people. So, mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that, that's what community theater right. is all it's about. It's eclectic. It's, it's eclectic, but that's all right. It should be eclectic. That's right. yeah. You know, I think that's, that's half the battle. Mm -hmm. I did see you, though, in a Gil Gilbert and Sullivan show, you know. Oh, did you? Yes, at Barnstable Comedy Club. Oh. oh. Yes, the Pirates. Yes, with my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> with your daughter. That They're is correct, there, that's right. yeah. and um, I will never forget it. I, you came out on stage, and I said I, I was with, um, I think Carol McManus and somebody else because yeah. we came, we came to see Janet Moore, Janet Geis Moore. She's wonderful, and she is wonderful. And um, <laughs> I, I hit Carol. I said, "Who's the guy?" Because yeah. <laughs> I had never seen <laughs> right. her before. So he, she goes, "Oh, that's Chris. You know, he does this and this. He's done this and this and this." So yes. anyway, <laughs> I was sitting there um, with, with a group of my friends too, and they were saying the same thing. But it was like, "Who's the guy?" Oh, <laughs> well, I'm old. I'm, I'm old and married. So I went, well, "Who's the guy?" So I'm, wait, I'm, I'm, but, and my <laughs> husband was on the stage too. But, well, so. I was looking for what I was looking for is, "Oh my God." There's another actor, <laughs> not a different race. Right, exactly, you know? yes. So, which was yeah. great, you know. Uh, my bright uh, red now? Or yeah, that's right. It should be. Uh, <laughs> but then I saw you uh, in Man of La Mancha, and you were so uh -huh. wonderful in that. That yeah. was excellent well, as well. You. So, mm -hmm. um, And, and you mentioned good. Man of La Mancha. You were wonderful. And Sarah Sneed, who was in Man of La Mancha, is going to be singing uh, with, oh, uh, with Gilbert with Sullivan. She is. She's oh, actually yeah. the, the, she's the baker that I mentioned. She has a shop in South Yarmouth, so she's going to be in the concert as well. Excellent, excellent. Well, it's, it's, all, it's so much fun to be in community theater. And if you're not involved or you're not going, they should get tickets and go, whether it's my play mm -hmm. or Gatuit Center for the Arts or Falmouth Theater Guild's getting ready to open up a show mm -hmm. uh, down in Falmouth. Um, I just did 
storytelling down in Woods Hole. My God, Woods Hole's a long way from Sandwich, but other than that, <laughs> Dennis is closer, <laughs> or easier to get to, I think. That might be it, but um, there are so many wonderful um, performing arts on the Cape, and people should take advantage of them. I don't know that they always do, but um, whether you live in Dennis or not, you should take advantage of them. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned this as being, you know, an interesting time, and honestly, I can't think of a better time for people to experience theater. It's um, it's a window on the human condition. It it's is what we do. It is. Um, so I always get interested, like, who are these actors? Who do they have any right to say anything about politics? Well, these are people who have studied and looked at and thought about the way other people think. They've been exposed to True. other cultures. They've been exposed to mm -hmm. other ideas, and really, when it comes down to it. What gives a politician the right to speak about things any more than an actor? <laughs> or what gives, you know? Or me. Or, or, or anybody, Very you know? Point. It's like it just so happens these people have a platform to speak right. on. But, right. but when it comes back to the performances, what it does is it gives performers an opportunity to interpret ideas and share ideas and then share those with people who then walk away with their own experiences. Right. Um, one of the things that I love about theater that makes it different from any other art form is that it's mm -hmm. collaborative. Mm -hmm. You're a director, there's a producer, there's a stage manager, mm -hmm. there are actors, there's differences in lighting, differences in staging. All of those influence what people walk away with. It's not just one person's painting and their vision. It's everybody mm -hmm. working together. And that kind of collaboration requires people to work together and understand each other and to interpret and reinterpret other people's visions and other people's approaches. Mm -hmm. and in this day and age, when there is so much anger and so much misunderstanding, what better way to bring people together than put them into a room and allow them to watch people express and freely express right. emotions, That's frustration, right. love, affection, mm -hmm. anger. Right. Um, to be able to put that on the stage and to be able to give people an opportunity to, to experience that in a way that is safe and um, productive and thought-provoking is, is important, especially now especially now. Well, and that's why uh, the show which I'm directing, which is Over the River and Through the Woods by Joe DiPietro, uh, and opens October 18th. 18th. <laughs> November 4th. <laughs> November 4th. <laughs> Tickets on sale. The reason why this show touched a nerve with me, and again, I had never heard of it before, and a lot of people hadn't heard mm -hmm. of it. It had been off-Broadway, I guess, but it, it had never, it just didn't, around here hadn't clicked. Um, is the family interaction. You have two sets of grandparents from a different generation, certainly than the grandson and, and the, the woman, um, and uh, the young woman he meets, and you have two sets of family that grew up the same way, but are very different in their, in their thought process. And it's so funny because in the beginning you think, oh, the, all four of them are just alike, and then all of a sudden you realize they're not. One's quiet, one's loud, one's, you know, one will be loud, one will be quiet. Um, and the women are in the family, the, the grandmothers are there, and all they've ever wanted to do is help people. And that's all they've done, all their lives. Mm -hmm. And even though they don't want to take care of their grandson, they don't, you know, it wasn't there, that's, that's why they're there. And they state that, that right. that's why they're there, is to be there to yeah. help them. And we talk about the, the Italian ancestry, but yes. it really translates to oh. any ethnicity. We, it's, very, it's very funny because we had a, a gentleman who came, was a friend of a cast member who came in with his wife because they were they were going to be away and he, they wanted to see it. And I said, of course, bring him in. And they laughed through the whole thing. And they're Jewish. But he was laughing because he, he grew up in New York and he said, we had Italians next door. They would never go to a big supermarket for meat. They would go because there's talk about supermarkets. <laughs> And he said, oh, no, no, they would have gone to the butcher. It would have only been the butcher. And I said, well, I can't change that. <laughs> it is what it is. But, but it, I mean, he could relate to it, you know. And um, my sister was here from California. She could relate to it. And um, we were, were a wasp family. So, mm -hmm. you know, growing up and, and the grandparents and what have you. Um, and just the interaction between family members. And sometimes you talk nice and sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. It's great. Well, it's a, it's a great story, and like, like Sonia said, it's it's a story about Italian Americans. I think it's set in 1984. No, it's actually like, in the 90s. 90s. The 90s, okay. But so it's, it's before 9 11 <clears throat> because I can't tell you why, but it's you'll know it's before 9 11. So it's, it's set in the it's set in the 90s. Right. Um, but the story itself, 
really does translate because all of our families at some point have gone through that immigrant experience. Oh, sure. And generationally, we've had my parents, my grandparents oh. sacrifice sure. in ways right. that they can't even mm -hmm. quantify right. um, in order to be able to give me the opportunities that I've had. You sure. know, and I mm -hmm. sacrifice to give my children their opportunities. Right. And my sacrifices are very different from what my parents sure. and grandparents sure. gave. Yeah. And someday my son and daughter will have families of their own and they'll be making sacrifices. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is the universality of that story. Mm -hmm. That somewhere along the way, all of us in our history came over here on a boat. Yeah. Somewhere. Right. You know, mm -hmm. or, or um, you know, flew over or traveled over right. on a steamship or, or walked across a border from Canada mm -hmm. or from, from Mexico. Um, and the experience is very much unique, but it's also at the very same time universal. Yeah, and that's, that's a beautiful true. part about this story is yeah, families right. looking out for families, yeah. looking out for each other and the sacrifices that each generation makes to try and make life better for the next generation. That it's, is correct, for yeah. sure. It is, it's, and it's, it's a story that we're living now. We see it every day. And, we and do. the challenges that are faced by those right. people right. in the society they're trying to assimilate in. Right, right. Um, well, the good news is this has some funny parts. I think some of the yes, things that are happening does. today yes. aren't exactly no. funny, but at least it has some funny parts to it. So um, that it'll, you'll walk away with a tear and a giggle. So that's what I've been saying. So I, I do hope people come out to see it because it is really wonderful. And I've never, oh my God, all the actors I've worked with are going to shoot me dead. But in, in this particular in, instance, I've never worked with six actors that were so willing to be so pliable and, say, and have me say to them, okay, well now why don't you think about this, and why don't you think about that? And they all go, yeah, I hadn't thought that, yeah. And the other night I had one of them say to me, uh, I don't like, I don't want to do that. And I looked at him, I said, okay, so you are the, and he goes, actor, and I said, and I am, <laughs> he goes, the director, I said, yes. And he said, okay, so then he sent me a yes, note. <laughs> yeah, he was very cute. And so then he sends me a note so we could discuss it, you know, and, and which was fine, but it discussed it then, if you, but he didn't want to. So he, anyway, he, um, he sent me a note, and we, I sent him back, and I said, thank you, you know, I think we can work this out, and it'll be perfect. And it will be perfect. Come see it, it's gonna be perfect. Mm -hmm. I just wanna thank you for being here. You came all thank that you. way from Dennis. <laughs> it was a long way. It was a long way, isn't it a hike? <laughs> Well, now that summer's over, it's not so bad. No, it's well, actually, gosh, I'm, I'm down there in 25 minutes. So yeah. It's, it's not okay. far. So you take, from Sandwich, you take Route 6 to Exit 8, get off, go to 6A, make a right, and you go into Dennis, and it's right there on your right. right-hand side. And if you want the scenic route, just take 6A all the way. Oh, it takes 6A all the way. That's right. If you want to go for a Sunday drive, it's mm -hmm. perfect. I want to thank you. First of all, thank you again for allowing me to do this publicly, I'm saying that. And um, thank you again for being here today and joining me on Cape Conversations. Thank, thank you, you very much. A pleasure being here. Sonia Shoning and Chris Ward, oh, involved with Eventide Theater Company. It is going to be spectacular. It's been great for 25 years. They're going to take it to the next step. And I think that just sounds like so much fun. And they're going to produce wonderful cultural materials and theater that we can all go and see. So thank you for joining me today. And I'll see you next time on another Cape Conversations.